Welcome to On Bullshit, episode 11. Episode 11. I just repeat when, what episode we're on. I've, I've started to notice that. <laughs> this is Amy. And I'm the panda. And we're back! <laughs> I'm back from vacation, y'all. Yeah, panda went on vacation. In, to New Zealand, the most beautiful country on earth, I've decided. I'm freaking jealous. Isn't that where they filmed The Hobbit? And, well, no, and, and the Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. If you watch Herculean Xena series back in the day, those two and like everything re- like, that requires a beautiful landscape. Pretty much any. Yeah, I was about to say any fucking movie that requires a beautiful <laughs> landscape. <laughs> <laughs> but, but oh, sorry. Go ahead. Aside from my jealousy, let's just get into what we're talking about. Okay, we have a great topic for you guys. We're talking about sexting. Sexting in. Middle school slash high school in Oklahoma. Because <laughs> that's a thing that's going on. So apparently, the sheriff's county, no, the sheriff's office in one of the Oklahoma counties, mm-hmm. they sent out a warning to parents that they are apparently having to investigate quote unquote sexting rings <laughs> in prepubescent children. It was in Canadian County. I was going to say. But I forgot that since we 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 said we're in Oklahoma, it's, we might as well just say what we're what area we're talking about. So yeah, Canadian County. They're just warning the teach the students, the teachers, and the parents. They're not talking about how to prevent this, other than like keep your kid occupied during the summer. Right. If your kid gets caught doing this, we'll start the conversation with them. <laughs> Possibly give them community service. What are they going to learn in community service? How to masturbate later. Yes. How to <laughs> hide their online activities both on their computer and on their phone. Right. Because, you know, parents don't know about the restrictions and parental controls and all that stuff. That, that's the most ridiculous thing, though. It's just, like, the, the simplest way to, to, I guess, get at their kids or stop them from doing this would be, like you said, with restrictions yeah and they're like trying to give them this advice on this convoluted whole like clone your kid's phone so they know what they're doing no put restrictions on the phone so the kid can get to these sites that are like showing them how to send all these photos or the fact that these photos are popular in other words rather than just trying to restrict what they do you should basically give them zero privacy exactly just watch everything that they're doing make your kid not trust you Make them want to get away from you as fast as they can. And, and that always leads to better results, right? Exactly! <laughs> um, you know, because homelessness is better than having your mom oh, yeah. looking over your short, shoulder virtually. Not even just being there physically in the room with you. She's just like, <laughs> she's going to get a notification that you did this at this hour on this day. <laughs> <laughs> I Like we were talking about before, I really think the biggest problem is like all of this is just like basically abstinence training. It is! It's not directly, like, making kids promise to not have sex, but it's basically along the same lines. It's pretty much don't do it, not naughty, naughty little kids. Yeah, hairy palms, you know. (laughs) God. Like, literally, we said earlier, telling these kids not to do it is giving a chronic masturbator a pair of oven mitts. Right. (laughs) I love that analogy. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Like, seriously, Educate these kids on sex ed. You, you know, the thing that's always surprising to me is, like, this. there is one area, this especially, I think, when you study the facts and look at studies, there there's always a correlation between, like, teaching kids actual sexual education and making them practice safe sex by using, like, condoms or contraceptives mm-hmm. and, te- you know, giving them, like, a real education. And all the areas that do this tend to see, like, drops in the rates of teen pregnancies Mm -hmm. whereas abstinence training they always see an increase wonder why like ours yeah i remember my sex ed like eighth grade one hour one day in the morning they took us to one of our local churches they (laughs) separated the boys from the girls one hour of nasty videos of like chlamydia syphilis all those freaking (laughs) <laughs> D- diseases right. you get there was nothing no talk about condoms there was nothing like if anything happens you can go to like certain places and get treatment right nothing and actually you know i i want to say there was probably two or three girls in my senior graduating class that were pregnant when we were walking across the stage 
when there was one girl, I was a sophomore, I think she was a junior, it might have been freshman, sophomore for me. Mm -hmm. Like, this girl was 15. It was the middle of the school year. She had to go, we have like an offshoot of our local school called, they call it the Academy. The it's academy. basically like these, the special ed for the older students. I want to uh, say. Oh, okay, yeah. And like that's where they send the pregnant girls. Like I had a coworker that she was pregnant while she was in high school, so she went there. Oh, weird. Yeah. So like teaching kids not to <laughs> have sex is just gonna make them more curious, and they're gonna go out and have sex. And guess what? And also, like you just randomly lose a classmate because of what they'll teach other classmates to have sex like yeah you, they'll they'll be talking about it but like behind closed doors like just in whispers of like right it feels like listen this and this and we did this and we did that and we, <laughs> we found this place it's just like no we're as like you always hear people say like excuse their boyfriends hook up whatever right. with the there is no condom that fits them Bull fucking shit, you can shove an entire arm in a condom. Right. You can shove your entire fucking foot in a condom. You can shove your head in a condom. So no, that is yeah. fucking bullshit. You, you are absolutely right. I've heard that. <laughs> I actually, uh, as a dude, like, I, I know I've talked to a lot of guys that make that argument. I agree with you. I think it's complete bullshit. Like, you should just fess up to, like, the fact yeah. that you fucking hate the feeling of a condom. Wrap it before you tap it. Yes. Or you're going to end up with side effects that you don't want or you're gonna have to go buy the morning after pill See, well that's the thing right like it, you may not like the feeling of a condom it may reduce like the sensitivity mm -hmm. but quite frankly if, if you weigh your options it's like deal with potential you're pregnancy or the the morning after pill is like it used to be like 30 to 40 bucks the price has gone up it's around 57 dollars right now brand name mm. It's only slightly less than that for the generic. Condoms are less than 10 bucks. Right. So you want to spend like 10 bucks or nearly $60. Right. It's, you're, you're going to lose if you decide, no, I want to feel, I want to feel right. Or, you know, if you're with a long-term partner, you don't like condoms and like for some reason she doesn't have insurance, she's not on birth control, pay yourself for her to have birth control. Yeah. It's not that hard. It's not that expensive. I think if uh, they can cover, like, male Viagra under insurance plans, they yes. can just get the fuck over it and cover... Yes, especially... Implants or, what, you know, yeah. whatever. It's not that hard. No, yeah. Like, literally, today, we had, like, an older gentleman. He's, like, in his 60s. Mm -hmm. He went in and bought Cialis, 30 tablets. His insurance paid, like... Over two hundred dollars for him to have them. Right. So pay for girls to have fucking birth control so they don't have pregnant and they can like, you know, still go to school and not have to go to like the special ed courses so they can graduate. I think the thing that kills me too is like there, there are legitimately other reasons besides just sex. Like a mm -hmm. girl might use birth control. The yeah, for her periods because it exactly. will regulate your periods. There are girls that, like, they have such a heavy flow, they are in danger of a hemorrhage if they don't control their periods. But, like, as soon as anyone in high school... This is another thing that really sucks. As soon as someone finds out that one of their female classmates is on birth control, they automatically assume that it's because she's having sex. Yeah. So, like, no, get your head out of your tiny little ass <laughs> and learn, no, demand to be taught about sexual education and get the fuck over slut shaming too for real like literally prostitution is the oldest profession in the world like, right in history nobody gives a shit and you shouldn't mm -mm. care about your classmates and even if they are having sex even if they're having sex with everybody who cares right like, why do you care so much it's not like there's gonna be a disease spread right so unless you are actively having sex with this person as well or unless and they don't get catch proper. It. <laughs> I was gonna say unless they don't get proper sex ed education, right? Mm -hmm. 
I feel like that's... That, that was one of the other things I was going to say, getting back to what you were talking about and, like, the sex ed stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember they kept driving the point in, like, our group that condoms won't protect you from STDs. And it's like, I, it's just yeah, bullshit. They will. Yeah, they, they absolutely <laughs> will. It's, a, it's an actual physical barrier between your skin. Right. And bodily fluids. Stuff generally doesn't penetrate it, so uh, I think it will work, yeah. But yeah. Instead, like, they just want you to believe you're just fucked. No, if you have any, if you engage in any kind of sex, you're just mm-hmm. screwed. Unless they are assuming, like the ass wipes that they are, that these kids are going out and finding old condoms, and of course they're going to be all, like, breaky, so of course they're not going to work. Right. But, like, of course not. These kids know how to get a hold of what they need. Because they're fucking cheap. Yeah. And, like, you know, these kids have older friends that they can just send in to wherever to get them what they need. It's the same thing as, like, buying beer. Yes. It's the exact same fucking thing. Right. And the more, like, you try and pretend, you know, this isn't something you, your kid, you want them to know anything about mm-hmm. or want them to worry about, like, the more they're going to get interested in it and yeah. probably end up. And just telling them, don't do it, doesn't, like, even if you don't bring it up, even if it's, like, even if no one around this kid is talking about it, they're going to be like, oh, hey, I have these parts, what are they for? Right. Like, other than, like, you know, bowel movements and <laughs> all that, like, these kids... It's an instinct. Yes. We have an instinct to reproduce, so of course we're going to figure out how to use our external body parts. Kids are sexually curious. They are. So, like, no matter, even if, like, their parents don't talk about it, even if their classmates don't talk about it, even if the teachers don't talk about it, they're going to find out about it. Right. Because there's allusions to it in kids' cartoons, even. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so they are going to get curious, no matter how sheltered they are. I, I, I so want to talk about the religious aspect of this, but I know that would lead us down a whole another. Oh, that would just leave us at the deepest rabbit hole you can find. So, so I'll, I'll keep off of it. But the point is, abstinence doesn't fucking work. Kids no. have sex. Get over it. It's not a big deal. I don't know why that's a big deal. Well, I guess religion, but. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's the whole thing. We live in the Bible Belt. Yes. So that means no sex before marriage. Period. So, what are you going to do to all these girls that you know are having sex before they're married? Stone them? That's what the Bible demands. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's what I always kind of love about that. Like, depending on, like, you know, how religious you are, it uh. seems like a lot of people tend to ignore the more violent parts of the Bible. Or I guess Except the Old Except well, it's unless it's the parts that they like and uh, like Oh, um, absolutely. To where it's talking about like homosexuals and all that stuff. Like <sighs> Literally, <laughs> like when people try to bring up the like the um, the homosexual passage, whatever in the Bible, I'm like, did you know that the same passage says that men should not play with pigskin? That means American football is illegal. Right. <laughs> so stick that in your eye. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think there, there are so many things that get carried over, too, just for, like, from, I think it's from the letters that, like, was it Paul or someone wrote? It's not even stuff that's, like, in the canon. It's mm-hmm. just letters from people that were figureheads mm-hmm. in the original development of the Bible. But Was it Peter or Paul that never actually met Jesus? One of the two never met him in life. It's been too many years for my religious studies classes. <laughs> Let's move on for that. That's fair. <laughs> but, uh, God, kids and sex. Sexting. God. It's a natural, it's a natural progression. Everyone's on social media now. Kids have phones. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but kids are growing up a little bit faster than they used to. Yeah, like I told you, my 10 year old sister has a phone. Yeah. So they're you're, they're going to get exposed. You can't protect your kids from mm-hmm. stuff. We might as well embrace the digital age and, and teach them how to use the resources. Yes. without like we you have know. to realize like it's getting harder to keep doing the old school abstinence bullshit. Mm-hmm. So let's start talking to kids about sex when they're younger. They can handle it. Especially like I mentioned earlier, in those states where there is no age of consent. Yeah. So yeah. Think about that. Well, do you have any parting thoughts on this topic? Did we really, really spend a whole yeah, episode we, talking about sexting? We did. Oh, God. I would also like to point out, I did say we would spend an episode at some point talking about sex. We totally did. <laughs> Probably in the future, we're going to do it again. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we will. We absolutely will. 
So, any any parting wisdom or thoughts on the subject? Teach your kids how their fucking bodies work. Come <laughs> on. Don't be scared to talk to your kids about sex. For I real. promise you, it's not that big a deal. It's only it o- is natural. It's only awkward if you make it awkward, mm-hmm. and you can potentially protect your kids by not having them pick up an STD for being stupid about sex. Mm-hmm. And don't tell them they're gonna go to hell if they have sex before they're married, please. Yes, and I will say this, I think you're a bad parent if you do that. Yeah. I legitimately worry. You wanna do a part two? Yeah. Okay. Alright, bye for now. Bye!